All right, we're discussing the impact of the Pakistan election. The Pakistani electorate has voted. Counting is on. Results could be out by around 2 a.m. tomorrow morning. Let's go back to our guests. And I'd like to put the first question to Ambassador Casey Singh. Ambassador Casey Singh, how would South Block, how would the Ministry of External Affairs and the Indian government be viewing this election? Well, as it is, the relationship has really been at a standstill. Uh, we've had really no government in Pakistan for the last few months. Nawaz was, had been knocked out in May. So for what, two or three months, and then there's a transitional government. Uh, but by the time the new government settles down, now if Imran comes in, uh, it's possible, as most prime ministers do, he may start making, uh, you know, less radical statements. Uh, he may try to reach out. But by then, India would be going into its own election phase. Uh, because, you know, what is left of the current mm -hmm. term of the Lok Sabha? Uh, by another two months, they'll be really heading towards Lok Sabha election. So I don't see, I think it's essentially South Block would be playing a defensive game. We have a high commissioner there. They'll wait and see how the new prime minister pans out, how he reaches out, how he... Now, one thing which is, of course, still pending is the SARC meeting. So we don't know whether India will release the hold mm. on that and we have a SARC meeting. Or we just continue till India also mm. faces an election and then decides, watches the current government for some time. By then we have our elections and then decide mm. after that what the... Next mm. government, this government comes back or another government is there, how they want to deal uh, with Pakistan. Mm. But at the same time, uh, if uh, Imran okay. is also capable of dramatic gestures, uh, you know, he's, he's a former cricket mm. captain, he's a charismatic figure, he can carry the masses with him, but that may also invite him the opposition of the army, because army doesn't like Pakistani prime ministers to play uh, okay. on their own, uh, you know, the game with India. So I doubt if he's going to do it in the beginning. He'll Absolutely. start slowly. He has other things on his plate. And then yeah. also depends who his coalition members are. One point I wanted to note that in the current delimitation, mm. which has just taken place, Punjab has lost mm. seven seats. Mm. From 148, they've come to 141. Mm. Now what you need for a majority is 137. Mm. So from out of 148, you could get close to 137. But from 141, 141, there's no way you can get 137. So I don't think anybody with support in Punjab, like in the Maas Sharif, can hope to reach a majority uh, by just the Punjab vote. They'll have to carry other provinces with them. Okay. Absolutely. And I'd like to get in Gul Bukhari here. Uh, we have been speaking about, and this is something that Ambassador Casey Singh has also pointed out, that there will probably be a coalition. You'll have to rely on other smaller players also. In this election, we have seen the rise of several extremist groups. Hafiz Said. Milli Muslim League could not contest, but we believe at least 200 candidates backed by him and the Milli Muslim League are contesting this election. And the 2611 mastermind himself very calmly uh, voted today. So what does this really say about uh, the establishment and about the Pakistani election? And what kind of a role would you a know, person like Hafiz Saeed have in the next government? Well, it remains to be seen. Uh, let me tell you, he has fielded 300 candidates. Um, and we have seen him field candidates in uh, some of the previous bipoles since uh, September last year. And in each contest, mm. his, uh, his candidate got about, say, seven, eight, nine thousand votes. Uh, therefore, mm. if, if that fact, and each time, each time, in each bipole, so therefore, I do not actually mm. see any of his candidates in the legislature. And I believe that mm. his party and his candidates have been fielded basically to divide mm. the vote. So it cuts. Now, mm. it was designed, this guy, as well as the Tahrik Labek party, they were designed mm. to cut away the the conservative or religious vote of the end league. However, mm. what we mm. saw in some of the uh, bipoles was that they ended up cutting the PTIs, mm. <clears throat> especially in Peshawar. Mm. Uh, so it will be okay. quite uh, sort of, it will be something to see as to whose votes they have mm. cut, uh, whose lead they have cut eventually all over Pakistan. But, you know, with maybe okay. even 10,000, 12,000 votes, I do not expect a single one of Milli Muslim League candidates getting mm. into the assemblies, actually. Mm. 
Okay, Gul, on that note, I'll so go he, across to Shailesh. Yeah. Shailesh has been waiting patiently. Shailesh, we have been talking sure. about the influence of the army, and clearly the influence has been a lot, extensive on this election, on the campaign. Uh, how much room, considering that we've seen mainstreaming of extremist groups like the Jamaat ud dawa like those of Hafiz Said, how much room will the new prime minister, new government, have for maneuvering when it comes to ties with India? Yeah, I'm not, I, not much is a simple answer. So as the ambassador pointed, a couple of points, as the ambassador pointed out, India is about to go into an election season. In my assessment, the election season began with the no confidence vote last week. And so you're in an election cycle in India unofficially. There's absolutely zero appetite on the Indian side, mm. in my opinion, to have any discussions at mm. the moment with Pakistan. The second point is the Pakistani civilian government has very limited autonomy when it comes to foreign policy. The only real policy matter they can control independently is probably economic policy. National mm. security, defense, foreign policy, mm. relations with India, relations with Afghanistan, relations with the U.S., these are all within the Army's domain. And as the ambassador also pointed out, mm. every time you've seen uh, a prime minister freelance and try to independently manage an mm. India policy, he's very quickly slapped down by the Army. This is a huge risk to consider because mm. you've seen this mm. become very problematic in past instances where a prime minister mm. tries to go out mm. and do something independently and the army sends a signal either indirectly okay. or sometimes unfortunately directly, which means uh, a terrorist event. Hmm. So I don't think that the civilian government's going to have much scope or, or, or opportunity to do anything with India. The army simply is just not going to allow right. it at the moment. Okay, Shailesh, we're running out of time. I'll put one quick question to Raza. Raza, if you can just sum this up in 15 seconds, what really is the future for Nawaz Sharif and the PMLN? So I feel that the PMLN may uh, may uh, lose out on forming uh, uh, the federal government. Of, of course, it's very early to say, uh, but certainly uh, is in the last one year it has emerged as a formidable party and a force to reckon with. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> with Nawaz's daughter Mariam as a likely successor, I don't think we can wish away Nawaz Sharif that soon. All right, uh, Raza Ahmed, Rumi, thank you very much for joining us. And we'd like to thank all our guests, Ambassador Casey Singh, Gul Bukhari, and also Shailesh for joining us all the way from Washington, D.C. We'd like to leave you with this thought. And this is a quote from the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan, which said that there are now ample grounds to doubt the legitimacy of these elections. There are alarming implications for Pakistan's transition to an effective democracy. We agree with our guests that we need to still wait for the election outcome. But the fact is the new prime minister, new government will have to send a very positive message about the legitimacy of this election to the global community. Thanks for watching.